Yeah. So a kid sleds down a snow covered hill that's 60 meters long. If the child starts and, at rest and reaches the bottom of the hill in 12 seconds, what's the child's final speed? All right, so, uh, well, let's, let's start with what we have for givens here. What do we have for the givens? Anybody? Uh, we've got the distance. Yeah, we've got the distance, right? What symbol do I use for a distance? Um, delta X. Yeah, good. So I have delta X equals, uh, what did you say the distance was? Uh, 60 meters. Yeah, 60 meters, good. So that's one of the givens. Um, what else do we have? The initial velocity. Okay, we have the initial velocity, and how do we know that? Because it's a star at rest. Right, starts at rest, right? So initial velocity is zero, good. And then we have one more given. And delta time. Right, thanks, Jose. Delta T, right? Our time is the uh, 12 seconds it takes to get to the bottom of the hill. Okay, so we've got our givens. That's step one. Step two would be to, to figure out the unknown or what question they're asking. And which symbol, which quantity are we looking for? For the final velocity. Right, for the final velocity. Right, because it says how fast, uh, or it says what is the child's final speed, right, or final velocity. All right, great. So um, now we can go on to step three, which is to pick our equation. So we need the equation that's got a delta x, a vxi, a delta t, and a vxf in it, um, which is the only equation up there that, that has all of those. Uh, it's gonna be the the first one. Yeah, that's right. It is gonna be the first one, right? It's gonna be uh, this is the only one that has delta x, vxi, delta t, and vxf. So we'll write down that first equation. All right. So we do need to rearrange this to get vxf by itself, right? So um, remember, the first thing to do if, if our unknown is inside parentheses is to get the parentheses by itself. So what we'll do here first is divide by what's multiplied by the parentheses. So the delta t, so that cancels out, and the one half, so that cancels out. And of course, I have to do that to the other side as well, so a delta t on the bottom there. And again, like I did uh, the other day, instead of doing one half on the bottom, it's the same as multiplying by two. And it's easier not to screw up if you multiply by two instead of dividing by one half. Uh, so I end up with two times delta x divided by delta t equals the vxi plus vxf. Now I have just one step left if I wanna get my final velocity by itself, what's the last thing I need to do to get rid of VXI from this side? Uh, we have to subtract the initial velocity on both sides. Yeah, that's right. You have to subtract the initial velocity from both sides, right? Because if I subtract it from this side, I have VXI and minus VXI and they cancel out. And I also have to do it to the other side as well. So when I rewrite my final equation, I get final velocity is two delta x divided by delta t minus my initial velocity. Okay, now I can plug in my numbers. So two times 60 meters divided by my time, which was 12 seconds, and then just minus zero, right? And that's not gonna do anything for us. So uh, if you can't do that one in your head, we do two times 60 divided by 12 and we get 10, All right? So we get a final velocity of 10 meters per second, right? And it's because meters up here, seconds down there, our units is meters per second. Meters per second is a velocity, so our units work out well. 
Um, and uh, 10 meters per second for something accelerating for 12 seconds isn't um, seemed reasonable enough to me. Uh, I know that Jose and also, um, who else got it right? Uh, nobody else here, I don't think, got this one right in today's problem of the day. Um, but uh, any questions on how we got any of that? Okay, well.